Our speaker will be having about 30 minutes to present his um, topic. And um, after that, we have question and answer. And for you to ask your questions, you just have to type them in the chat box and then um, you can go ahead. Uh, your questions will be read and then answers will be given. So please feel free to type in your questions in the chat box. So as the speaker goes on with his presentation and you pay attention, you have questions, please write them down in the chat box. That is why we have the Q&A um, session on the webinar today. So that's just about the housekeeping rules this afternoon. So our guest today is a technology expert. He's the CEO and head of design of Torilo Nigeria. I'll be introducing to you this afternoon, Oluwa Shion Fahirinri. So Shion, are you on? Okay, good. So please go ahead and introduce yourself and then dive into our discussion for today. All right, hi Abela, thank you. You're welcome, Sean. Good to have you here this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, soon. How are you? Good. And how are you doing too? Very fine, thank you. All right, so I'm about to share my screen. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll just share my screen and then we'll get right into it. You see my introduction in the screen. Um, all participants. Okay. Something. Okay. Sorry, hold on, please. Give me a minute. Sorry. <coughs> All right. Yes. Okay. okay. Great. Please confirm you can see my screen. One second, please. Uh, yes, I can see your screen. All right. Great. Um. So yeah. Good afternoon again. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Ulu Ashion. Finally, um, you can just um, refer to me as Shion. I'm the CEO of Torilo Nigeria, like Abela said. Um, um, <clears throat> what we really do at Torilo is um, we work with businesses to help them grow. Um, so whether it's about process or operations, so we build tools for businesses. Um, to help them, help them grow. Um, Torilo is a company incorporated in the UK and um, we have a presence here in Nigeria. Um, I lead the Nigeria team, um, the Nigerian team rather. Um, so about myself, um, I'm keen on technology. I'm not sure if this is covering it. Yeah, I'm keen on technology and the potential um, it has as a bridge to our goals. Basically, um, you know, the potential technology has to help us bridge where we are and how we need to get to our goals. However, I also equally believe that not all problems require technology solutions, at least not in the first instance, right? Um, I know it's very arguable, but coming from a, from someone who is in tech, right? So, but yeah, I explained for that. And you would see the reason why as we go down, um, further down into my slides, right? So um, these are my social media channels or IDs if you wish to connect to me. Right, so I also don't think it would be right to you know, talk about myself or talk about Torilo without talking about the people who actually make up Torilo or the people who are Torilo, right? So these are the groups of awesome people we have in Torilo. Um, we, this is, this is one of the images from the time we launched BZ, one of our um, best performing apps in the market right now. Um, I'll talk a bit about that as we go further down. <coughs> Great. So what we'll be discussing i be like, can you confirm these um, menus I am seeing here are not showing on your end and they're not covering the slides? Okay, I can see your screen. Um, I can see what's, what we'll be discussing and- uh, Okay, can you see any more? Like, yes, yes, you can see the whole thing, yes. What, uh, why, how, clearly, yes. No, no, so I'm talking about the menus from um, Zoom. They are not showing on your end, right? No, no. Okay, great. So they're not covering the screen. I just wanted to confirm that. All right, let's find it. Let's give it. Let's move it off. It is covering my own end here. So, yes, so <clears throat> these are the things we'll be discussing in the webinar today. 
Um, this is a bit refined. Um, this this is one of the conversations I, I've had with um, some business um, owners um, in the Lagos State um, Employment Trust Fund. So I just refined this a bit to work for this present use case. So if you were present in the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, um, you might find this a bit interesting that I've seen this again. But yeah, so what we'll be discussing really will be the, the what, the why, and the how of automation, right? And I broke it down this way so that um, we can understand how um, we would implement this going forward, right? So we'll talk about what automation is, look at definition. Um, I believe some of us are familiar with it, or most of us will be familiar with it, but it will be important to look at it. Um, look at repetitive task, we'll look at impact of repetitive task. Um, we'll look at why we even need automation in the first place. And um, we then go into how to automate. We'll look at a case study of um, BZ, right? So I just want us to know that the slide will be available um, to us. We'll be made available to us. Um, I'm sure um, the people in charge of the webinar will forward it to us if we need it, right? So going on. Right, throughout this presentation, we'll be using a case study, um, which is Benny. Um, we would consider Benny as an entrepreneur. Um, she has a laundry business. Um, so there's a gap she identified in our operation. Um, basically, workers um, take turns to record and track stocks. Um, basically, so if you're familiar with how the laundry business works, you need to take record of stocks know who brought what, know what type of clothes they brought and what, what type of order they're actually requesting for, right? So this takes an average of 15 minutes per order. Now, the, at, at present, the company processes about 25 orders per day, but has capacity to increase it to 40. So the machines are there, the resources or the tools actually get it done a day. But um, if she, only if she can save time. If she can save time, they can get to 40 orders per day. But if she can't, unfortunately, they would have to be they have to keep doing 25 orders per day. Um, if they continue with the same process. Now, she can't run more, more orders because the time taken to complete this process increases as the order does. So, for example, um, if she does 40 orders, then the time to do 40 orders would increase. Um, because you know it's it's a manual process, right? Um, so if we have the opportunity to take a poll using this background story. Um, what would be your advice for Benny? Should Benny hire extra hands to do this? Um, yes or no, right? Um, I'm sure why the conversation is going on, the poll is going to come up to get our views and our opinions, whether Benny should hire extra hands to actually um, help her and do this, and or she shouldn't, right? Okay, cool. So again, to just give us a brief overview, remember we're talking about um, technology or what our focus is um, technology as a leverage, but we'll be focusing on automation. Automation because um, a big part of um, business processes really will revolve around automation, right? So that's why we're looking at automation. So you might be surprised that um, we're not going deep into technology and what technologies or not. I'm assuming that most of us on this call are already familiar with what technologies and different types that we have out there, right? So what is automation? Um, basically, it's a term in technology that is used for a case where human input is minimized, right? Um, now, some of the automation or different types of automation we have out there, uh, business process automation, IT automation, personal applications such as home automation and more. So home automation such as our smart homes, our smart devices, the ability to connect um, your Google Home to your TV or um, the Google Mini in your kitchen. Right. However, our focus for this webinar would be business process automation because, again, we are business owners. And um, so our focus will be on our businesses, right? Moving on. And so I'll, I'll encourage you, by the way, if you have any questions or you feel like you just want to make comments, please feel free to leave it in the chat. I'll be happy to drop in there and, you know, just attend to it or pick insight from whatever it is that you're sharing with us as well. Um, so I would enjoy it if I appreciate rather if this you know, is a collaborative work, um, it will make it more fun for all of us. All right, so the polls are up right now. I'm trying to get it off my screen. Give me a minute, please. I'm sorry, just give me a minute. I'm trying to get it off my screen. Thank you. Great. So 
Um, business process automation is the use of technology. Excuse me. It's the use of technology to automate repeatable day-to-day tasks. Um, the goal really will be to accelerate um, our work is done by routing information to the right person at the right time through defined rules and actions. So simply put, business process automation is simply to identify repeatable tasks, um, route them, set rules, and say, if this happens, then this is what should be done. And then pass, pass them through you know, these um, processes and you, know, you don't have to keep doing them over and over again, right? So remember, a good example of a repeatable process is um, Benny, a use case, where she has to take orders for um, our customers who come to do laundry. Right, so a bit of um, insight into what, you know, repetition has cost businesses. So in total, repeated tasks are costing businesses as much as 19 working days per year per employee. Now, if you apply this to Benny, Benny would lose... 19 times 24 orders, if she's making, if she's still making 24 orders, she'll be she, not he, pardon me. If she's still making 24 orders, and 25 orders per day, it means Betty would have lost an average of um, 475 orders, right, for the whole year, just for one employee. If Benny has 10 employees, that's, that's 4,750 orders that she would have lost to repeatable tasks or repeated tasks, right? So. That's to tell us how much you know repeated tasks are eating into or repeated tasks eat into our daily, you know, daily productivity or daily time that we could use to do other productive things, right? So again, it will be important to know what repetitive tasks are. Um, it will be it will be important because um most of us do them, but are not really familiar with, you know, we don't really even know that they exist. Some of them are not necessarily that bad, some of them are most of them are actually very needed. Um, in the workplace would address that as we move on. Right, an example is data entry. Um, say you have someone that, um, whose job is just to, so Benny's case again, person's job is to come, sit down, take orders, input them in spreadsheets daily, take orders, input them in spreadsheet manually. That's a repetitive task, right? Um, another example is copying and pasting from one, one application to another. Um, that's one key, problem that business is solving right now. We'll talk about that down the line. But say you're trying to pass a, you know, a set of data from the payroll table to the HR table, from the HR table to payroll table. Um, the process of trying to go into this data set, copying it and taking it and pasting it to another platform, basically, is a potential time wasted. So I can see our polls are up now. I can see about 75, 71% of our audience saying Benny shouldn't hire an extra hand, while 29% said Benny should. That's interesting. Along the line, I'll ask, I'll ask to ask us why we think Benny should and why we think Benny shouldn't. By the time, you know, we're a bit far gone into our conversation. All right, great. So moving on. So another example of repetitive task really is um, recruiting and hiring. Um, it's, 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 it's no news right now that, you know, it's the Japa frenzy and many talents are leaving companies or organizations these days. Um, that process, if we can automate such a process, it will save the HR team a huge amount of time to focus on, you know, building culture within your team or growing other arms of, you know, the, the, the team to improve productivity. Data backup is another repetitive task. So um, a use case is where a team or a department has to always back up data manually by plugging hard drive into systems. This alone um, leaves them vulnerable to even virus attacks and infections in their system. Um, posting on social media is another repetitive task, um, if not automated. Scheduling appointments is a repetitive task. Um, invoicing and billing is definitely a repetitive task. Payroll is, and then reporting can be one annoying repetitive task that we should look into as well. Um, the process of you having to go into the data and you know, creating whatever it is you have to create in, in spreadsheets, right? So we'll move on. Now, another study found that time wasted in repetitive task that could be automated is over 40%. That means four out of 10 tasks 
in businesses are actually repetitive. Again, this is not necessarily a bad thing, but we need to look at it and ask ourselves, um, are we handling this repetitive task the right way or the wrong way? And are we leveraging, you know, are we leveraging tools that are available to us or solutions that are available to us to give better, um, to, to improve our productivity, basically? Now, we've learned about repetitive tasks. We need to know how they affect us. They can definitely, like most of us, you know, reduce efficiency, um, loss of time, um, loss of funds um, that could be directed into other things, loss of even um, creativity. You could spend that time doing much more creative stuff, right? So they can affect, affect employee morals. Um, a research actually showed that um, half of employees believe that it's poor use of skills and getting in the way of doing the main job that they were employed for, right? So if an employee feels like I come to the work every day and I just, all I have to come and be just posting on social media, right? Um, I don't think, I don't know, but the average employee would not be satisfied with, with such task, right? Also, they lead to financial leakages. Um, I put the leakages in quote because um, a research shows that in the US economy alone, um, they've lost about 1.8 trillion to different types of repetitive tasks on a yearly basis, right? And, you know, repetitive tasks also lead to errors, right? Um, especially costly, um, costly ones. Um, if you can't eliminate human errors. If you make one person, if one person continues to do some, one thing, I'd say, you know, for over and over, um, you can't eliminate the, the place of errors for such, in such case. Um, so again, let's not forget our friend, Benny. Um, at this point, let's assume that she's losing about 50,000 Naira weekly for every year that she can't process, right? So remember, um, she could make up to 40 others. She only does 25. That means there's 15 somewhere that she's not making. Multiply 15 by 50,000 Naira, right? So that's a lot of money, right? It would be nice for us to take a quick pause here, like I was saying, and for us to just quickly reflect. Um, the way I, we, we, we might have gone through repetitive tasks so far might make them look like they're the villain. They're, they necessarily are not the villain. Um, many businesses thrive off performing repetitive tasks. Um, you know, um, task management tools are out there. Most of what we do actually in our workplace revolve around some repetitive task, right? The only thing that would be bad with repetitive task is not to know how to manage them so they don't distract you from being innovative and creating other solutions or looking at other strategies to actually grow the business because repetitive tasks would always be there, right? So the goal of this webinar is not to tell us that we would never have repetitive tasks or we should never have it. It's to tell us that we can welcome them, but we need to learn how to manage them better and then look at tools and look at you know, ideas to work around them better. Right. So again, Another reflection time and a cool look at some statistics. 50% of businesses or business processes rather will be fully automated by 2022. Now we are in that year, 2022. Um, and the question I'll be asking all of us is if we're aligned and if 50% of our businesses are actually automated right now. Um, just we don't have to answer that. We can we can look inwards and ask ourselves. Again, like I said at the beginning of this webinar, you don't need to worry. The slides will be shared to you at the end of the webinar, right? Now let's look at why we should automate. Um, one of the reasons we want to automate, remember we talked about the impact of repetitive tasks. One of the reasons we then want to automate is to improve, improve efficiency and productivity. We use automation to also foster innovation. If you can free up time that you spend on repetitive tasks, it allows you look at other arms of your business. So let's look at Benny again, right? Um, Benny, if Benny can save that time, she can think more, she can think of more ideas around, you know, community engagement, more ideas around how to offer better and, you know, improved quality service to um, our customers. Obviously you save more, both in time and money. Um, you gain business insights for improved processes. Um, we'll look at that as we go further down. It helps you edge against uncertainty, right? Um, automated process basically ensures that, so we all experienced the old COVID um, era. 
and we saw how the boom of you know you know automation and you know the likes of how calendly basically um was the eat or became the eat and people were just scheduling you know meetings using calendly and other automated tasks like you know google calendar and whatnot um with you know automated tools or tools of automation you basically are you have an edge against a certainty. So take for example, Benny again, let's say an employee um, is the one that handles the manual entry and you know entry of the order process. If that employee who is experienced with that process um, falls ill today, if any other person um, comes on board, right, they might not be able to handle that process as much as, or as well as that person has been doing it which connects to the ease of knowledge transfer, right? Um, also, automation offers um, better customer experience, and then it helps you, you know, helps you better your chance of scaling um, on a larger scale. Sorry, I repeated that, but that's funny. All right, cool. Now, how to automate business processes. So we've defined what automation is. We've, we've looked at, you know, repetitive tasks, which are the reasons why we need automation in the first place. We've looked at their impact, and we look at the benefits of automation. Now, one thing we should look at is how to automate. Um, I have a few steps here, which I'll be explaining as we go further down, but the, the steps really are identify repetitive task. That's the first goal. Um, you want to know what those tasks are. Consider a systems approach. Consider whether it's a budget fit. Consider whether it's a problem fit. Implement a trial, measure the impact, and then integrate. Right, so we look at the first step, identification. Um, now, like I said at the beginning of the webinar, I said not all processes actually require automation, at least not in the first instance, right? So um, when we encounter problems, our minds should, first of all, think of what technology can I use to solve this problem? Even though I'm an advocate of, you know, using technology solutions, but our mind shouldn't be, oh, what tool can I use? What mobile app can I use? You know, I've had conversations with people um, in, from my background as a product designer, where people come to me and approach me and they tell me things like, oh, she I have this great idea. I want to be this mobile app that can solve this. And when I listen to them, I just come to the conclusion. I tell them, I become factual with them. I just tell them straight on that, you know, you don't need a mobile app to actually do that for you. Um, you just need to look at your process and <laughs> create a better process, right? So you can have a mobile app much later, but you don't even understand there's a problem with your process and that's what you need to focus on. So um, while seeking for tools, we need to ask ourselves if, if there's actually a problem process, first of all, before actually jumping on a technology platform or jumping on a tool or jumping on a tool that helps us automate, right? Um, right, and then the next thing we then want to move on to, once we've identified this repetitive task and we've actually concluded that they're actually you know, a process problem, they just have to happen. Um, then we look at a systems approach, right? And a system basically is a set of processes aimed at, aimed at achieving a, a task or a set task, right? Um, so a system will be a collection of different processes, right? So for example, building the customer involves sorting the clothes. In Benny's case, who owns a laundry shop. Um, <clears throat> entering the data and generating an invoice to share with the said customer, right? So that's some steps there and that's, that's those steps collect, collectively make up the system, right? So you need to be able to group your steps into a system and see if they actually all belong to one system, right? So identify those tasks, group them into a system to make sense of them. Now, once you've done that and you've actually, you know, validated that, you know, they can be systems, what next step is to really consider whether they budget fit for you, right? Um, Many tools out there um, solve different, you know, problems and different. They they help release or relieve or relieve us of different bottlenecks, right? So, but you want to explore as many as you can. You want to see if it's a financial fit for you. Um, you want to consider what where the company is at the moment. You want to ensure that the cost. So it's one thing for a, a tool to solve a problem for you right now, and you can afford it for one month, and then solve that problem and then you can't afford it going forward that's bad right so you want something that you can keep affording right and that's the result 
would actually bring in help bringing more funds to help you sustain you know being subscribed to such solutions right so the next step you then look at is problem fit like i said you need to understand the problem you need to understand the problem um be sure that there is actually a problem there before you jump on it too if not you could further complicate the problem um if you just use the technology tool right um internally here yeah, we've also had cases where you know we've adopted the use of a particular tool and you know we just we're just quick to learn that this tool is not going to work for us right i'm quickly stopping and say you know what this thing is actually not working for us right so i'll i'll tell you how we did that in, in the next in the next step oh sorry i was going to um cite this now there is and then there's a, there's a, there's a technique called the five whys that you can use to actually get the root cause it's called the root cause analysis um the five whys approach helps you understand if there's problem or not so you have a problem statement um we are losing two hours to receiving and sorting orders from customers then the first question is why then you answer the first why you answer the second why and so you get to the fifth why Usually the fifth why would help you reflect what the root cause is. You would then know that, oh, okay, we lose this number of hours to the business because we have a problem with repetitive task. Right? I'm just assuming that's that's the root cause. Right. So that's basically what root cause analysis is about and the five wise approach. Um, the next stage, which I was going to tell you about, and this is one stage that has helped us also know whether or not a tool is going to work for us, right? Is to implement a trial when you're not sure. If you have doubts, implement a trial. I mean, almost every app out there has a trial, right? Especially for tools that you're unfamiliar with. Um, and the reason you're implementing a trial basically is to check if they are effective or they're a good fit for your, for your team. Um, now, to implement a trial, depending on the size of your team, right? Um, you obviously cannot onboard everyone in, so you need to look at the focus groups. Um, what are the people that would be using these tools? And then pick. So if the app, app allows you a particular number that can enable you bring in all these people, put them in there. If not, you need to dig further down and look at focus group and pick like five people out of say 10 and say, you know, I'm going to try this app with you guys. And then if it works, that's that's basically a sample size. Um, to then you know extend it to the wider team. So we've done that internally as well with our software. You know we're trying to jump on a particular tool. And um, sorry, excuse me, I need to take water. Thank you. So we've jumped on a particular tool, but before doing that, um, we first of all try to understand our problem or what the problem is, and then we then use focus groups. So using focus groups has allowed us to know whether or not an app is going to work for us. Um, by the time we tried, I'm like, okay, you know what, this thing's not solving the problem. These guys are not getting it. And they are not getting it not because they can't use it, but it's just not working. And then we stop and we just don't pay for it. And so that those are the purposes of trials, anyways. You know, it's to help you understand whether, <coughs> excuse me, it's to help you understand whether or not you know the solution is actually going to be a fit for you. For different reasons, it might not be, it could be um. It could be because culturally it doesn't fit for you, or you know, maybe team size is not a fit. It could be any other thing, right? It, it could also be that you know you also need to reflect and look at how you have implemented it, right? So um <clears throat> now while you're implementing a trial, you need to measure the impact, right? You should be able to assess, you know, if you improve the process or not. Um, you should look at your output over the period of time that you've you know try out this app or this solution um it also helps you you know understand the adjustments you need to make on your end right so one thing about automation is it helps you it basically opens up loopholes that you have right by the time you start using it you start saying oh this is probably what we're not doing right so this is probably what we're doing wrong that we need to improve on or this is probably what we're doing right but we still need to improve on right so um some tools are you know some tools help you. A tool like BZ will definitely help you with that, right? So um, the process, by the time you start running time and attendance in BZ, for example, you start seeing that, oh, people resume more within this time and this time. Therefore, we probably need to look at, you know, 
giving our guys opportunity to maybe resume either earlier or you know do a work from home thing or you know juggle it or just basically gives you insight by looking at the reports now once you go through all these processes that i stated from identification to grouping them into systems to looking at the budget to considering whether their problem fits for you or not and you've implemented the trial and you've measured the impact and it's a successful one you can go ahead to integrate across the wider team now even when you've integrated you need to keep reviewing right um so there's a, there's a method uh, that the toyota company you know adopts it's called the kaizen method and kaizen method basically encourages employees within the system to come up with ideas or innovation that would help grow the system so um you find you know employees telling management that oh you know what i need a tool that can allow me pick screws automatically or that can eject screws for me automatically it would sound ridiculous at the first instance, right? So while I was looking at a particular video and I heard the amount of seconds that it saves that guy to, to perform that repetitive task. It saves him about 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 something seconds. And I was like, what's the significance of 0 0.5 something seconds by just ejecting a screw from you know, a device? And so at the end, when he did the calculation and whatnot, at the end of the month, it would have saved him almost more than five hours based on the number of cars that he could produce. And at the end of the year, it would have saved him hundreds of hours and he would have been able to produce maybe X, two X more cars or three X more cars. So if he was producing say 100, he would be producing say 200 or 300 more just by helping him eliminate the task of him manually picking up the screw and putting it on the screwdriver to screw into a particular part of the car. Right. The Kaizen method, you know, encourages continuous change. It encourages you eliminating waste and also encourages free communication. So, um, you know, once you've implemented these tools or the solution, encourage your team members, your employees or your workers to actually give you feedback. It's important, right? So, because it's one thing for you to think it is valuable for you. It's another thing for them to find it valuable, right? So it always works both ways, right? So does it help them solve the problem? And are you also getting the desired results from your end? Right, cool. Thank you. Moving on. Now we we'll look at basic tools for automating business processes. We're approaching the end of our um, presentation. So I would ask people that said no. I would like to ask people that said no to actually state why they said no. And I would like to ask people that said yes also state why they said yes. Um, that's um, the poll we ran for whether or not Benny should higher extra hands. Well, I'm sure by now we would have better insight into it since we've gotten this far, right? So basic tools to help automate your core business processes, right? I touched on Kalen earlier. Scheduling meetings is one thing that we said is a repetitive task. So imagine trying to reach out to a partner or a potential partner, and you guys are going back and forth on LinkedIn and you're like, oh, okay, this time works for me. And then you go check your calendar. Like, oh, this time doesn't work for me. And then he has checked his calendar. Oh, let's do this time. Right. Just have a calendly, share with people. Oh, here's my calendly. What time within my slots work for you? Or they share their calendly, right? Um, so for tax management, there are things like Google Task, Asana, um, that can help you, you know, manage tasks better. Um, you don't have to have your team leads physically um pursuing the team members to get tasks done. Um, you don't have to lose them in. In, in, in a document somewhere, you can basically go to a platform and review them and automate you know, reminders and whatnot. Now, creating and setting meeting reminders, Google Calendar solves that for you. Backing up, I said earlier, um, instead of manually having to remember first of all to go and get the hard drive and back up files for the week or for the day, you can basically set up an extension on Google Drive um, it's called a streaming or a it's called streaming basically streaming or a live streaming um allows you um target a particular folder in your drive excuse me a particular folder in your drive that you want google drive to keep backing up at intervals and then that could that, that can be done automatically for you anytime you save a file in there and you don't have to worry about losing the file um now to automate pricing or billing predefined with formulas and whatnot, just spreadsheets. Um, so for example, instead of manually calculating, if I bring five orders or bring five clothes to wash to Benny's laundry shop, 
instead of Benny having to calculate, you can basically input formulas, automate them in your spreadsheet, and then it gets done. Um, so share this social media post. This is one of the biggest deals for startups, especially. Um, it's it's actually it's actually it's not a it's it's I won't consider posting as a primary KPI for a social media manager. As in that's that's if it's a KPI at all, it's probably one of the least KPIs. It's, it's actually the the idea around the post, um, the the whether the post is solving the problem or not, whether it's actually meeting the you know the audience need. Those are the key KPIs, not posting. So a social media manager shouldn't come to a performance review and say, oh, you know, my task for the last month is that I posted on social media. Posting, yes, it's, it's a task. It should be done, but it, sh it should be automated, really. And then you have things like YouTube and Buffer to help you do that. Now, we have processes like HR, payroll, asset and vehicle management, accounting and reporting processes, like I mentioned earlier. HR processes, um, like I said earlier, you know, hiring, onboarding, document sharing. These are repetitive tasks that the HR person or personnel has to, personnel rather, has to do. Um, payroll processes are now one that has to be done like on a monthly basis. You could basically automate all of these processes using the business suite of hubs, right? So, um, and then interesting thing is they are all connected into each other. Um, they, you have the, you have the ability to onboard, once you onboard an employee from the HR, it gets automatically added to your payroll. And then you don't have to carry a file or say, oh, um, payroll officer, this is the file of Tunde that just got onboarded last month or last week. Please add them to your payroll stream. You get what I'm saying? It just happens automatically in the app. And same thing reflects in your accounting. In your accounting, you can basically see, you know, a breakdown of costs you've had so far and, you know, expenses such as, you know, the payroll. And then you can assign assets, vehicles, and manage them within the app. Right. So um, the last thing I'd like to tell us is that we need to keep learning. Um, businesses are created to solve problems for people. People are dynamic. Therefore, your business should be dynamic, right? So with all I've said, you need to bear in mind that you know, this, is not, this is not the end to it. You need to keep learning. You need to keep looking at your processes. And um, yeah, definitely you need to evolve, right? That's one thing that keeps you relevant. Okay, cool. Um, I highlighted on BZ, so for the benefit of people that were, or that are in, that are present in this webinar, you get access to a 10% discount on your quarterly subscription on BZ, right? So I'm sure one of our team members is going to drop the link in the chat for us. Um, and yeah, ask me saying thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, you can drop them in. Um, but yeah, I was going to mention on this, I skipped this, sir. Um, we have an offer for up to five businesses to look into their processes. Um, basically, we just want to talk with you um, because it's what we enjoy doing. Let's talk with you. Let's look into your processes together with you. Um, and then we can give you advice or, you know, just basically our own professional advice on you know, processes you probably should automate in your business. Um, and how you can better, you, how you can get better results, right? So again, if you have any questions, please ask. These are social media channels. Feel free to connect with us, reach out to us, say hi, say hello, ask us more about BZ. We're ready to talk to you about it. Thank you very much. I'll be going to the chat sections now too. Um, yeah. So, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Thank you so much, Sean. Uh, you were spot on there. You did justice to the topic. Um, you, you mentioned something as a start that was saying 2020 percentages of business would would have to automate and all um previously people were saying if you are not on the internet then you are dead but now it's not just been on the internet if you are not on the internet and you're not automating your business process then probably you are finished <laughs> so we'll put it that way um this is to bring to attention that this webinar is uh brought to you by bz uh, a business management tool and um, we have a message from them and in the next two minutes we'll be listening to this message so let's just uh, pay attention then after that uh, we will talk about the business of helping other businesses automate their process so before we talk about that one let's just listen to this brief uh, 
message. Uh, Sorry, I'm gonna, I feel like a few questions are in the chat. Um, okay, do we have coming in? Should we wait um, till after? Uh, let's wait till after. So we'll just have all our questions at once, then we then we then we take them. Okay. Yes. So I'll be sharing my screen to to do that. Managing a business efficiently can be challenging. You have your business growth, employees, finances, assets, and payments to think of. Managing all these with multiple apps can be overwhelming. How about managing it all in one place? For free, BizEdge has got you. People management shouldn't be a pain. Onboard and integrate your new employees easily. Store all your employee records securely with all your people organized in one place. Your employees can clock in and out easily from my edge, a self-service app for your team. Employees can also view their leave allowance and request time off with the click of a button. With the time and attendance app, you track your team's on-site or remote work hours and days. Have a best eye view of your workforce with reports. Understand your workforce performance and get insights on what matters. Run payroll the smart way. Generate pay slips and send to employees effortlessly. Get simplified reports and deep insights. Now, your payroll is supercharged with BizEdge. With BizEdge Asset App, gain visibility of your assets, assign to employees and keep track of their status. Manage all your vehicle and driver information in one place. Never miss reminders on maintenance and legal documents. BizEdge helps manage every aspect of the business so everything runs smoothly. Gain full visibility of all your business operations. Start business every day with efficiency in mind. Okay, we're back. Um, I'm sure we got that message from, from BizEdge. So I mentioned earlier that we'll be talking about the business of helping other businesses automate their business processes. So we're talking about our referral partnership program. So I want to call on the Alawadi to just tell us briefly about the business of helping other businesses do better. All right, thank you very much e, for, for that. Um, thank you very much. So now, um, of course, we'll do well to check out the link you'll be putting in the um, chat section there. Thank you very much, Jam. Yeah. So we'll be taking our questions now. And um, I know our speaker is very much around to, to give answers to these questions. So Shion, we are ready to hit you with the questions now. So our first question here is coming from um, Queen. So our question is, so does this apply to a business that is purely virtual? So she wants oh, to yeah. as well. Um, so does does this apply to business that is purely virtual? Yes. Uh yes. Um, I, I'm I'm assuming that um she's referring to BZ. Yes, hundred percent. Um, um. So with BZ, you can basically, in fact, the use case is even much more useful for you, right? So you get insights into the different um, activities that are happening in your business from wherever they are or from wherever they are happening, right? And also, if you feel like you want your employees to clock in remotely, all you need to indicate is um, their location or their remote location, right? And they can clock in from wherever they are. So 100%, it applies to businesses that are purely virtual. Um, okay. You want to Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, that answers your question, um, Queen. So uh, the next question says, uh, how can I automate my biz, my process as a fashion business owner? This is from Deborah Kyle. All right, thanks, Deborah. Right, so every business has similarities, right, in, in their operations. And one thing I bring them together really is operation. So we are buying and selling. You are attending to customers. You are managing assets and you're managing employees, which are people, right? So, um, Depending on the number or the size of your organization, right? Um, you can leverage a tool like BizEdge to manage your HR process. So we, um, one of our clients, for known reasons I can't mention their name, is a big fashion house. 
and they use BZ to manage, you know, their operations, their time and attendance. So we have time and attendance and, you know, this client wants to know when each one of the employees resuming at, at the workplace um, and also wants to be able to track their assets and also wants to be able to use the app to generate pay slips to pay um, the workers or the tailors, the designers, fashion designers in this case, um, at the end of the month, right? So there are many ways and there are many things that you can automate in your fashion business, depending on the size, right? Um, if it's a small scale business, then I would say um, for now, leverage on tools that are available to you, which is Google Spreadsheets, um, Google Docs, um, use that for documentation and then, you know, a calendar to just schedule meetings with prospective client, depending on the size, right? So, but if you are really interested in getting reports and knowing how your employee is performing, you want to automate pay slips, um, you want to be able to um, not make errors with your tax deductions and remittances, then definitely you should consider um, You can reach out to um, contacts that I believe will be provided in the chat to learn more about Bizage and how it can help your business. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Sean, for the answer there. I believe um, we've helped the borrower see that, yes, regardless of the kind of business you run, Bizage can automate this process. Um, we have another question here. This is from uh, Abim Bola. She's asking, how can Bizage help in automating my company's HR process. Then she has a follow-up question that says, I have seven employees. Is there a number limit to use BizEdge? So first, the first question, how can BizEdge help with uh, automating her HR process? Okay, so I'll answer the last question first, and then I'll answer the first question last. Right, okay. so, <laughs> right, so you, you, you don't have a limit. Um, there's no limit to the number of employees that you can have on BZ. Um, it's from as small as the number that you have to as big as whatever number that you can imagine. So how we beat BZ basically is to grow with you. Um, we believe we believe that businesses like yours have the potential to grow in the next one year, two years, three years. And so basically that's how we design our pricing, right? Our pricing grows with you. So the moment you have 10 employees, the moment you have 500 employees, the moment you have a thousand employees globally. Right, so there's no limit, right? So we have enterprise level um, clients who would want to not use maybe up to 3,000 or 4,000 and they will say, you know what, um, give us pricing and give us a good deal, right? So um, now how can BZ help in automating your company's HR operations? Many ways really. Um, HR operations is a very broad one. Um, you have your performance review, you have your hiring, you have your um, daily operations, and then you have your documentation. All of these things are mentioned are things that you can do with HR. Also, for daily operation, for example, we have the time and attendance app that helps you keep track of, you know, um, the, um, the, 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 the timing or the attendance of, of your employee. For example, you need to just set your, um, your opening and your closing time and employees can clock in. So we have a mobile app for employees. It's a self-service app that we have for the employees really. Um, it's called My Edge. And with my head, they just download it on their mobile device and um, they can clock in. They can also request for their leave. So they don't have to send you mails and just long emails. They don't have to think about long emails. You just set the leave policy. You create different kinds of leaves that you have. So parental leave, maternal leave, sick leave, emergency leave, annual leave, vacation. And then they go there and they request whichever leave that they want, put a whatever, whatever comments that they want to put, and then you get to approve on your end. That's one way I'm sure that it can help. And that we release. Um, so we have um, the employee, the team side where, you know, the employees can see the celebrations, their work anniversaries, and, you know, um, know who they are working with, especially for someone that asked for the virtual um, application. So because it's, it's a, you're working virtually, right? So you, you're not so familiar with people that you work with. Right, so with the team app, you can really see who you are working with, their name, their title, department, where they are working from, um, as well. So another way that you know, BZ can help your HR operations process really is the the hiring side that I mentioned. So very soon, we are releasing that arm of things. It's going to be out there. We are going to release that this year, hopefully, and also the performance side. Um, 
Now, another way you can help your HR operations is also the report side. I know that HR folks are big on reports, right? You definitely want, any business really should be big on reports. Um, you want to know how your, you know, your, your, your process has been so far. You want to know where you did, you want to know where you did well. You want to understand what you did when you did well, right? And you want to understand what you did when you did not do well, right? So really reports is big side. Um, we have very interesting reports and we're working on more reports based on feedback from our focus group who are a group of um, their collection of you know, HR professionals that we work with that give us further insight on the kind of reports that we think would be beneficial for, for our users. Yeah, so again, there are many ways. So just check out bizedjab.com. Um, you'd also see many, many ways that HR and um, Bized can help your HR processes. I hope I helped there. Abela. Okay, thank you very much, Sean, for providing answers to that. Uh, we have another question from Timmy Tope, and our question is, uh, well, this person's question is, do I need to be an HR to use this edge? Um, no, you don't need to. Um, so we've created it for people who are both professionals and people who are not professionals. The business owner out there who runs a business who just has like 20, 25 people and but does not have an HR um, team can use it, right? So. We've simplified the process for you. We've basically, if I, for lack of words, we've dumbed the process down for you so much that anybody can actually use it, right? So um, you don't have to know the technicalities of HR. Most of those reports are also explained for that for you. And in the case that you then, you know, still struggle with it, we have a strong support team that is ready to onboard you properly on the app. But um, So I'll give you an example. Um, we have a music company. A music company. So we have an owner of a music company which is in our app currently. And again, anybody in music doesn't have a, an HR background, right? So, but they are using it quite well and they are using it even for it for our payroll process, right? So um, I hope that answered the question. So basically, anybody can use it. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much, Sean. Yes, uh, you are correct. So anyone can use Blizzard. Is that as simple as um, downloading Candy Crush on your on your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. That's how simple the app is, of course. Um, thank you very much. Um, if you still have questions, or please, this is the time for you to ask Sean. He's here live to take questions, not just about um, um, BZ, but business automation as a whole. So what kind of business do you run? Is it a big one, a small one, a large one? Or maybe you work in one and you don't run one, but you are, you are an intrapreneur, that is you work with one at one. How can you make your uh, services that you provide in your company or organization better? How can you automate this process? That's what we are discussing this afternoon. So please, um, let's remember that the link here to our referral program is here. And if you have questions to ask, just tap on the link. Um, we're sending it again in the chat box and um, you get answers to your questions immediately. Yeah. So we just have about one minute more for questions and then we'll wrap it up. Just one minute. We just have one minute more for questions. We want to say a very big thank you to Xion for giving us this time today and um, helping us discuss on the topic. Um, next month is going to be very interesting. Um, we're having someone come and talk about tax. And please, if you're just starting out the business and you don't want the FIRS chasing you around Lagos or around Nigeria, please do well to tune into next month's edition so that you can listen and learn about compliance in the country because it's one big issue and um, um, that is what we are helping businesses do uh, by helping them make sure that they are on top of their business activities and business processes for growth and for success at their business. Uh, I think, okay, so we are up already. We are uh, going to end the session today. Uh, our one minute is up already. So thank you very much, Shion, for spending time with us. Um, we are social, as uh, Shion said, um, of course, yes, you, you would get the recording um, confidence. The recording will be up on our YouTube page. Once it's up, we'll send it to 
your email so you can access it and you can check our youtube page from time to time and you get to watch it there alongside with the slides to we'll also send that across to you in your email for you to download and enjoy uh, thank you very much for spending time with us this afternoon as i said we are social we are on linkedin we're on twitter we're on facebook we are on instagram just search for business app and um, follow us for business content and exciting offers so you don't miss out like for those who attended webinar you have the um, offer of having a 10 percent discount on your quarterly subscription so um we don't want you to sleep on this we want you to um grab this offer so um once you're about to register um at the point of registration, you put, input the code and you get this 10 percent, but it's on your quarter subscription. So your first quarterly subscription, um, you get 10 percent off. So this is how we come to the end of this session. And um, we want you to want you to enjoy the rest of the evening to see you uh, next month. And um, want to say take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.